Well, it's amazing that it's that time of the year already. It seems like it was just yesterday we were walking out of Tulsa. Um, I'm excited to get the season started. I think it's a team that's got a lot to prove. Uh, I think it's a team that people uh, seem to not think very highly of. So um, we're, we're really excited about the season and getting a chance to uh, go out and play, a, again, an ambitious, tremendous schedule and then uh, getting in the conference play and seeing how we stack up. So I just raise your hand if you have a question uh, for the players. I guess for Reggie, is, is that a big issue? You know, the, the disrespect card? I mean, you guys have only lost, what, two conference games in two years, and now people aren't even picking you to win it. I mean, is that something you guys are really focused on? Um, I, to be honest, we're focused on us. We know what this team is capable of. Um, we just got to go out there and prove everybody wrong, and that's something that I'm looking forward to doing along with the rest of my teammates. So the issue is not worrying about what those numbers say. It's worrying about what Oakland University basketball players do as a team. Dan Stickred for NorthOakensports.com. This question is for Reggie. Reggie, there's a lot of new faces on this team, guys that didn't play a lot last year. Some of the veterans are having an increased role. What's the chemistry like since the end of last season? Are you guys starting to get a better feel for each other? And who do you feel is kind of stepping up in this team to lead? Um, I think the most important thing when you uh, talk about team chemistry is t can the team get along off the court? as well as on the court. And I think this team has a good core. We, we're always together, whether we're eating lunch together or we're taking most of our classes together. And I think that's the most important thing, guys get in the gym together. So I think our team chemistry is great. Uh, Dan Fenner. Uh, Drew. Can you talk about the adjustment that will have to be made by this team um, not having, uh, I guess, Will Hudson and Keith Benson inside and sort of going with a little bit smaller lineup at times? Uh, I mean, I guess it just means that everybody's going to have to play harder. Um, we're all going to have to, you know, increase our rebounding. And, you know, just Will was a, a great effort guy. Will played his butt off. And, you know, it's going to be hard to replace a guy with a motor like that. So um, I just think collectively we have to do that. But um, as far as replacing Keto, um, it's going to be hard to replace a pro. But I think Corey Petros, Kyle Sikora, the young guys, I think that they've been doing a good job in practice. And uh, I think they're ready to show everybody what they've got as well. Uh, Laval, after sitting out last year, can you just talk about assimilating into the team and, and getting ready to go out there and share the, sharing the backcourt with Reggie? Well, you know, we got good good captains in Reggie and Val. You know, I'm just trying to um, take it one day at a time, follow the lead, you know, um, play as hard as I can. And I know it's, it's last season coming up, and um, just play as hard as I can and uh, do the best I can for Oakland. Any more questions for the players? Uh, Kevin Romanchik, the Oakland Post. Bader, after your freshman year, what do you feel like you can build upon for the upcoming season? Um, I've been working a lot towards uh, other things other than, than just uh, shooting. Uh, I'm trying to attack more. I'm trying to work on my pass and work on my handles, everything like that. But um, it's really just anything I can do to help the team. Um, if they need me to pass more, I'll pass more. If they need me to cheer louder, I'm going to cheer louder. So it's really just focus on the team and uh, how we can get better. Reggie, how much does the offense change without the big guys down there that are, you know you can rely on? I mean, is it, is it significant change? Is it? Just tempo, what are the, what are the... Um, To be honest, uh, I think we can run a little bit more with this team. Uh, Corey and Kyle Sakura, they're great getting up the floor. Um, we're still going to get the ball inside uh, just, just as much. I don't know if just as much as last year, but those guys are still going to get touches around the basket. And we got time for about two more questions for the players. Any more questions? Okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we'll open up questions for Coach Campy. Aside from the lack of size or the different 
post game you'll have this year. Is there other challenges for you and your staff, Greg, this year with this team? Well, we're young. I mean, we're you look at. I mean, we don't look the same. I'm sure when you walked in here today. I mean, the last few years when you looked at us, we looked like. I mean, you, if you put Michigan State jerseys on us, you, we could have been the Michigan State team with their size and seven feet six eleven and that. And we were mature. We were old. You know, Will Hudson was. I mean, he cut and things like that. Now we're we've got size. We're seven one six eleven six ten, but they're young. If you remember what Keto and Will looked like when they were freshmen, you know, it, it's pretty similar. So it just recycled back to that. You know, we just have to find uh, ways to do things different. We're, we're, we're going to be much different, but that doesn't mean we can't be as good or better. Coach, Matt Pocket, WXRU Radio. Um, do you guys plan on going with any five-guard lineups, uh, especially with some of the uh, lack of bodies up front, or do you plan on going – uh, with a pretty even distribution of minutes with, with Petros and Sakura and maybe Korab? Well, they're, you know, that's all going to wash itself out once we start playing games. But um, I do think at some time this year you're going to see five perimeter players out there. Um, I think you'll see that more in league play than you will in the non-league. I, I mean, obviously we can't walk into Alabama and do that. Um, but I will say this, if we can walk in places and get leads, I'd like to see how they'd guard that. Um, you know, with five guys that can put it on the floor and get to the rack and five guys that can really shoot it. We can, we can put five guys. And then you got Valentine and, and Cushenberry are both big bodies that can guard post players and, and rebound with them for short periods of time. I mean, I don't think you want to play 40 minutes that way, but I think if we can walk into a place like Alabama or Arkansas and get a six or eight point lead and, and go to that, I think that's going to create some problems for those teams. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, proposition to see how that works out. We heard how the players react to the preseason poll and being the quote unquote underdog, but how do, how do you feel? Do you kind of relish being the hunter rather than the hunted this season? Well, you've heard me say this for years and years. I don't care about that stuff. I really don't. I, I don't care about it. We don't care about individual awards here. We never talk about it. I have never discussed those types of things with the team. Um, I will tell you I'm surprised by it. You know, I'm surprised that we weren't picked to win it just because, I mean, we've won 50 of our last 53 league games. Uh, I mean, the, the league tournament last year, we had a 20-point lead in all three games. We, we had a 20-point lead over Oral Roberts with a minute to go in the championship game. Um, I'm, I'm not surprised that the media would not pick us. I'm just surprised the coaches wouldn't, you know. I mean, I, I surely would have picked some whoever had done, if, if that hadn't been Oakland, had been somebody else, I would pick that team until they didn't do it. So I guess I'm a little surprised by all that. Uh, you know, I, I mean, Travis Bader made 94 threes last year. Did anybody else in the league do that? And, and he's not an all-league player, a preseason all-league player. Come on. <laughs> who, who, who the hell's thinking when they vote? I mean, 94 threes as a freshman, 45%. Drew Valentine's probably the best all-round player in our conference. If I had to pick a guy to start a team with in our league, I think I'd pick Drew Valentine. I mean, what can't he do on the floor? I mean, is he going to score points like Reggie Hamilton? No. Is he going to get as many rebounds as Benson did? No. But collectively, all the things he does from guarding, from his leadership, from the type of kid he is, I mean, there's a reason that we've won a championship every year Drew Valentine's been in our program. So... You know, I, I'm, I'm surprised by it, but does it mean anything? No, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Coach, kind of talk about some of the newer players. You have a couple of redshirt players, but obviously you have uh, true freshmen like uh, Williams and Poaches. Where are some of these guys you feel fitting in the rotation, and how deep do you think this team is going to be compared to last year? Well, it works. We're, we're the deepest team I've ever had on the perimeter. I mean, we, man, we, we, we go 7-8 deep on the perimeter. Um, we got guys that, you know, could be starting at a lot, a lot of places that may only get seven or eight minutes in, in our rotation. Um, I expect Dante Williams, Matt Pochis, and Korab, the three freshmen, I expect we're probably going to redshirt one or two of them um, because of our depth. But I expect in the next four or five years that those guys are going to be big-name players that are going to play very well for us over their careers. I'd be very surprised if they're not. They... They all have issues. They all have to get bigger and stronger. But, you know, it's, it, it's all about fit. And right now, our perimeter is so good that who knows what's going to happen. Now, inside, we're going to 
you know, we're going to play a couple freshmen. I mean, somebody's got to play in there, and they're, and they're all freshmen. With, with Ilya leaving us at such a late stage, it, it wasn't like we could go recruit someone to replace him in the junior colleges or that. So that was, you know, a blow to us as far as uh, depth and, and experience. So we're going to be playing freshmen in there. But if I had to play freshmen somewhere, I'd rather play them inside than in the perimeter players. So, you know, I, I, I like our team. I think it's a pretty good team. Do you see this team being the same sort of offensive juggernaut that you had last year? Well, here, here's the question that we don't know. What's going to happen when the ball's not going in and or it's a tight game late and how are we going to get baskets? You know, how, how's that going to happen? We don't know that yet. And, uh, you know, we went, in, uh, we went to Canada and played a few games and we saw a little bit of it there, but we really didn't have any offense in, you know, when we played those games and we really – we weren't playing to win or anything like that. We were just playing to play. And, but when we get into a close game a year ago, you know, we were going to clear the floor, let Reggie drive it, and we knew that Benson was going to get guarded, and we were going to try and get the ball to him or, or, the, or that. We don't have that this year, and I doubt that we're going to, and I would, as good as Corey or, or it could be for us, I surely don't think that it, we're going to, tr you know, get the, him the ball in the most important possession of the game. It's probably going to be in, you know, one of our veterans' hands. So that's going to be a little bit different. Um, and how, how are we going to do that? That's, that's going to be the question. Until we're there and do it, I can't answer that. that. I was very concerned. My biggest concern about this team was rebounding. And those three Canadian games, we out-rebounded our opponents by 15 or 18 rebounds in all three games. So that made me feel a lot better about our team. Now, now that, that the University of Windsor is not Michigan State. But still, you had to do it. I mean, if, if we'd have gone in that game and won the rebounding by one or two rebounds, then Mike, I would really have concerns. But, uh, you know, we, we've got some great athletes. I, I mean, I think you're going to be amazed at the amount of rebounds that Lavelle and, and uh, um, Valentine get. And I think Petros has a good motor, and I think he's a guy that can get a lot of offensive rebounds for us. You know, you, you just look back at, at our history, and, you know, we lost Eric Kangas, and, and oh, my God, how are we going to replace all that shooting? Well, we've replaced it. And then we lost Derek Nelson, and how are we going to replace that athlete? He was the greatest offensive rebounder ever, and, and yet Will Hudson became the greatest offensive rebounder ever. Then we lost Jonathan Jones. How are you going to replace the assists? How are you going to replace the leadership? How are you going to replace? Well, Reggie Hamilton stepped in. Larry Wright stepped in. I mean, we have really good players, and they have opportunities in front of them, and it's their job to make the most of those opportunities. All right, we have time for two more questions. Coach, can you talk about, um, the, I guess, Reggie Hamilton's role as the, more so than last year, the real go-to guy without Keith Benson around. Uh, is, is his role going to change in the offense, any? No, you know, last year um, I refused early in the year to let Reggie run the point. And um, the dynamics of our team changed when Larry Wright got hurt and, and Reggie took over the point. And he proved to me that he could still score and run our point. And he's pretty much going to have the ball, and he's going to have to make great decisions, and he's going to have a lot of freedom because our offense allows freedom and because he's earned the freedom. So I don't think his role is going to change in any way, shape, or form. Again, it's how are we going to get those easy baskets? Well, we might get that same easy basket that Benson got us by beating everybody down the floor because we got five rabbits out there that can run faster than anybody else can run. You know, there are other ways to get that same play, and we've just got to find those ways. All right, final question. Looking ahead at the schedule, the last couple of years you've had really intimidating non-conference schedules. How do you think this year's slate stacks up in preparation for Summit play? Well, the biggest difference this year is we got home games. I mean, we've never had 15 home games before, so it's, I'm not quite sure what to do about it. You know, we've won. I don't know what the numbers are. Scott can tell you, but I think we've won 29 consecutive league games in here, and we've won maybe 42 or 44 or something like that. I mean, it's pretty amazing numbers that we've won in here. So in able to, in getting 15 home games should really help us. Uh, the level of competition, though, you know, we decided we're just going to play the A schools this year, you know. So we got Alabama, Arkansas, and Arizona. And uh, next year we'll look into the Bs and Cs maybe. But the A's are, you know, so that's, that's all we're doing. We just went into the alphabet and looked. All right, thanks so much, Coach Campy.